Hi, this is Phil Monkhouse, Realtor. Um, just going over a market update for Sienna. Um, I meant to do this around the new year, didn't get around to it. So this is uh, market info from uh, most of, mostly 2019, but it includes all the way up till yesterday, February 13th in 2020. Um, and then the uh, 2008, what I'll refer to as the 2018 year is up to um, February 13th, 2019. So two full years of data. I should have did this right at New Year's, but anyway, here it is. So in the last year um, in Siena, 696 homes were sold and the average uh, list price 392 and the average sold price 378. Um, this includes new construction from the ground, or say not from the ground up, just inventory homes from builders. We don't have access to data from the ground up. It's between the builder and the, uh, the buyer. Um, so an average list to sold ratio of 96.5%. Um, if you remove new construction, they tend to put a little buffer in there. Um, but if you remove new construction, that number would be even higher. Um, I could run reports to figure that out, but I think it's like typically, well, it's over 97% in Sienna. So pretty strong, um, pretty close relationship between list price and selling price. If we go back a year, in Siena, 615 homes were sold, new and resale. Um, the average list price and sold price were higher, but the uh, the ratio stays pretty close to the same. Um, I was thinking about the reasons for that, why the prices dropped. I don't think it was like a general market drop or anything like that. Just um, they definitely, uh, the builders definitely started putting out more affordable new homes in Siena. Um, there was a lot of new homes available in the uh, <coughs> high 200s, low 300s. So that probably pulled uh, uh, last year's number down a bit. I don't think it's a market drop. Um, if anything, things are really strong this year or the year that just passed. Uh, you can see like the, just by the total amount of homes sold, they increased quite a bit. So I'm just going to touch on Avalon briefly. Um, Avalon, you can see the big gap here between list price per square foot and selling price per square foot just go over the rest of these numbers list price and sold price everyone knows what those are adjusted sold price includes uh closing cost contributions and repairs that uh, occur during the uh, negotiation process and then adjusted selling price per square foot same thing just includes uh, uh negotiations during during the contract process um, I'm just going to stick with averages. You can see medians over here. They tell a slightly different story. They're interesting to look at too, but I'm just going to look at averages to keep it simple. Um, so let's see here. Um, yeah, big gap between um, uh, listing price per square foot and selling price per square foot. Selling price per square foot, Avalon's obviously mostly new construction, very high, um, but they price them even higher. I'm not exactly sure why builders do that. It's not all builders. It's usually builders that are in the 400s and up, I guess you could say, that kind of play this uh, play this game. I guess it lets buyers feel they got a deal or something like that. Uh, but that's just a good example. If you look at um, like this, uh, how close closely correlated these numbers are, um, the ratio is pretty high. Uh, just to show you if you pulled away new construction, this how this number would be even higher. So anyway, that's Avalon. Uh, moving into Anderson Springs, we have um, almost $118 a square foot. This is the 20, 2018 numbers. And then into um, and the 114 listings sold. And in 2019, 160 listings sold. And the price per square foot what went up over a dollar. So that's a good showing for Anderson Springs. Bees Creek, usually a pretty high price per square foot um, in Bees Creek. So selling price, this is 2019, 44 listings, 136.70. And then in, I don't know what I said for that one, but this is, my numbers are off here, but I'm calling this mostly full year 2019. Um, Big drop down to $125 a square foot. I was wondering if reasons for that. Um, I think a big, big part of that would be, I'm not sure how many were like this, but like if you see like the biggest sale in the year that just passed was a little over a million. But the year before that, there was a $2 million sale, $2 million sale, and there might have been a few like that. Um, and of course, those, those types of homes would have a higher price per square foot. 
So um, that would uh, definitely push this number up. Um, and also this year in the year that just passed, um, there's definitely like a few eye buyers, especially I remember Open Door. There's two of them. Um, they, they were they there was a few really bad sales for um, for Open Door in Beast Creek that probably dragged numbers down. They started off way too high with their list price, and then sold it really really low. So that that kind of hurts a bit too. Um, I'm gonna do a whole video on eye buyers one of these days. But anyway, moving to Steep Bank. Um, so steep bank. This is um, well two years ago. We'll call it almost one hundred six dollars a square foot. One hundred two listings sold. I combined east and west. One day I'll break that out. But um, in the year that just passed, there was only sixty one sales total. So it'd be pretty small if I broke those apart. Um, but the price per square foot's up. That's great. I'm not sure why the number of listings went down. I can't think of any reason for that. Um, but the price per square foot is increasing, so that's kind of nice to see. Uh, Shipman's Landing, um, almost $170, $107 a square foot and 70 listings sold. And then the year that just passed, that number has increased and um, we're up about, what was that, 40, 50 cents a square foot. So that's good. Good to see. Um, Waters Lake, uh, let's see here, almost $115 a square foot. Uh, two years ago, 87 listings sold. And then... Uh, only 75 that's not a big drop I guess and the price per square foot is down three dollars um, again I was thinking about reasons for that I guess one of them would be the uh, again um, just the dollar value of uh, the high the high end uh, this one's 1.25 million was the the highest sale last year and then the year before that there was at least one at 1.7 million and who knows, there might have been a couple more that would have um, pulled this average up. Plus, those Perry townhomes finished construction, um, I think, in this year. Like, the mostly, I know I have it labeled at 2019, but this is mostly 2018 finishing up in 2019. Um, those Perry townhomes would have uh, pushed this average up compared to the year that just passed. So, I don't think there's any market weakness in Waters Lake. That's just, uh, it'll probably straighten itself out out in the year ahead all right so now in sawmill sawmills mostly new construction um 127 dollars a square foot almost 127.50 um two years ago and then last year um like 129.50 ish so price is going up uh that's good to see uh definitely a strong uh strong new homes sales in Siena recently. Um, last year was over 2019 in the full year. I think there was over was over 500 homes. I forget the exact number, 515 or something like that. So yeah, things are looking up. Um, I don't know. It feels like this will be a stronger year than other years. And uh, it looks like, I mean, it wasn't a big jump, but overall it looks like a increase in the Siena market. And uh, yeah, I hope things keep going for for 2020 of a really strong year. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.